بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم We continue the the uh, explanation of the book of Al-Riqaq and uh, the next hadith is the hadith of Qutayba and this is 432 Hadith of Qutayba He said Haddathana Yaqub bin Abdul Rahman An Amr, An Sa'id Al-Maqburi An Abi Huraira An Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aqal Yaqul Allah ta'ala Ma li abdi al-mu'min Inda Indi jaza'un Iza qadattu Safiyyata Safiyyahu Min ahli al-dunya and this hadith, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah says, I have nothing to give but paradise as a reward to my believer slave, who if I cause his dear friend or relative to die, remains patient and hopes for Allah's reward. The point of evidence in this hadith, ثُمَّ احْتَسَبَهُ Meaning he remains uh, patient and uh, seeks the reward of the hereafter. As in another authentic hadith with respect to the fasting of Ramadan. Man sama Ramadan imanan wahtisaba. Whoever fasts Ramadan, the month of Ramadan meaning, out of faith and seeking, anticipating the reward so therefore he intends the reward of the hereafter and was Safi this is the dear uh, from those uh, who are relatives like the son the daughter the father the mother and the like now this is the point of evidence from this hadith then we move to a new chapter uh, Imam al-Bukhari entitled a new chapter Babun ما يحذر من زهرة الدنيا والتنافس فيها Chapter The warning regarding worldly pleasures amusements and competing against each other for the enjoyment thereof This is the title which Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah chose Then after that he gave the hadith relevant to this title and this hadith is hadith number 433 Haddathana Ismail ibn Abdillah Qala haddathani Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Uqbata an Musa ibn Uqbata qal Qala ibn Shihab haddathani Urwat ibn Zubayr أن المسور بن مخرمة أخبره أن عمر بن عوف وهو حليف لبن عامر بن لؤي كان شهد بدرا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبره أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعث أبا عبيدة بن الجراح إلى البحرين يأتي بجزيتها وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو صالح أهل البحرين وأمر عليهم العلاء بن الحضرمي فقدم أبو عبيدة بمال من البحرين فسمعت الأنصار فسمعت الأنصار بقدومه فوافقت صلاة الصبح مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلما انصرف تعرضوا له فتبسم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حين رآهم وقال أظنكم سمعتم بقدوم أبي عبيدة وأنه جاء بشيء قالوا أجل يا رسول الله قال فأبشروا وأملوا ما يسركم فوالله ما الفقر أخشى عليكم ولكن أخشى عليكم أن تبسط عليكم الدنيا كما بسطت على من كان قبلكم فتنافسوها وتلهيكم كما ألهتكم in this hadith, which is narrated by Amr bin Awf, an ally of the tribe of Bani Amr, um, and one of those who had witnessed the battle of Badr with Allah's Messenger, 
I'll repeat then since we dropped the mic. Uh, in this hadith, the hadith of Amr bin Awf radiallahu anhu, who is an ally of the tribe of Bani Amr ibn Lu'ay, um, and one of those who had witnessed the battle of Badr with Allah's Messenger. Allah's Messenger وسلم, sent Abu Ubaidah ibn al Jarrah to Bahrain. To Bahrain. And uh, the Bahrain is the, is the area of East Arabia, around in the, the area of Al Ahsa in Arabia, to collect the jizya tax. The jizya tax. Allah's Messenger وسلم, sent Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah to Bahrain to collect the jizya tax. Now Allah's Messenger وسلم, had concluded a peace treaty with the people of Bahrain. Jizya means tax. We'll explain. Just be, be, careful, be, be patient, inshallah. And appointed Al Ala ibn Al Hadrami as their chief. Abu Ubaidah arrived from Bahrain with money. The Ansar, the helpers in Medina, heard of Abu Ubaidah's arrival, which coincided with the Fajr morning prayer led by Allah's Messenger. When the Prophet ﷺ finished the prayer, they came to him. Allah's Messenger ﷺ smiled when he saw them and said, I think you have heard of the arrival of Abu Ubaidah and that he has brought something. They replied, Yes, O Allah's Messenger. He said, Have the good news, Abshu, and hope for what will please you. By Allah, I am not afraid that you will become poor, but I am afraid that worldly wealth will be given to you in abundance, and it was given to those nations before you, and you will start competing each other for it as the previous nations competed for it and then it will divert you from good as it diverted them this hadith therefore is evidence for the title which al-imam al-bukhari chose the worldly pleasures to watch on the warning regarding worldly pleasures and amusements and competing competing against each other for the enjoyment thereof. In fact, this became today the matter of concern to people. And people's concern is focused upon this kind of enjoyment and so forth. You <coughs> rarely find someone who is concerned and discusses activities related to the religion as to how the Muslims should be but the concern you find it focused about the enjoyments and means of enjoyments occurring in the lands and also in themselves this is the thing This is the thing which the Messenger وسلم, feared. When he said, I am not afraid that you will become poor. Malfaqr. Akhsha alaykum. But I am afraid that worldly wealth will be given to you in abundance. Why? Because the poverty does not rise from uh, arrogance and turning away from Allah. Although we know that there is no doubt that Poverty uh, may distract the person sometimes because he wants to seek the sustenance. Yet despite that, even with the seeking of the sustenance, if that goes with good intention, that it will turn to be a worship, as we discussed earlier or last time. But the Prophet ﷺ made it clear, but why, what I am afraid that worldly wealth will be given to you in abundance, as it was given to those nations before you 
and you will start competing each other for it as the previous nations competed for it and then it will divert you from good as it diverted them the thing which the messenger sallallahu feared occurred and now we are we are competing competing each other for its pleasures as the disbelievers do and we seek it as they seek it and many of us are mostly occupied with their homes decorations cars mounts clothes gardens and so forth this hadith also in this hadith there is a benefit and that is the affirmation of laying the jizya, the tax upon the kafir if they are under Islamic authority and Islamic rule because the kafirs are classified into three types first the people of jizya people of jizya those who reside in our lands and under our authority we protect, we protect them and defend them against any kind of aggression upon them but in return for a jizya a tax that they should pay to us this is therefore the first group Ashab al jizya the people of jizya meaning upon whom upon whom there is tax level the second are the people of Ahd the people of covenant the second group are the people of covenant and this means <coughs> this refers to those with whom we have a covenant that we don't fight them and they don't fight us and they are in their lands and they have their authority on their lands we don't do anything to them in their lands and so they do the same with the, to us in our lands these are this is the second group Ashab al-Ahd the people of the covenant with whom we have covenant the third Ashab al-Harb the people with whom we have war with them they fight us and we fight them and so these are the three classifications with respect to uh, the kuffar with respect to the third group the third group with whom we have war between them and us then their blood and wealth is lawful when we are able to fight them as to the people of the covenant it is binding upon us to fulfill to, ful to fulfill the covenant with them and to stay on it as long as they do so with respect to us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah At-Tawbah uh, chapter 9 verse 7 this is refer referring to the people of Al-Ahd uh, the ones with whom we have covenant so long as they are true to you stand you true to them you see that this is with what with respect to the ones with whom we have covenant so long as they are true to you stand you true to them now so with respect to this group which is the second group the second group is divided into three subgroups the people of the covenant are three groups <coughs> one the first one those who fulfill the covenant those who fulfill the covenant 
And Allah spoke about them in this verse, Surah At-Tawbah, verse 7, So long as they are true to you, stand you true to them. Second, the second, a group who betrayed the covenant and breached it, breached the covenant with us. So, this group, it is our right to wage war on them out of the sudden once they breach once they betray or breach the covenant the third group is the group whom we fear their treason and betrayal Those Allah addressed in Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8, 58. Ta'ala, ala sawa. If you fear treachery from any people through, throw back their covenant to them. If you fear treachery from any people, throw back their covenant to them so as to be on equal terms that there will be no more covenant between you and them and certainly Allah likes not the treacherous so therefore convey to them and tell them that there is no more covenant between you and us so that they are now the situation is clear to them so remember, as to those who are treacherous and breach, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to fight them. Because now they turned from this state into the state of the people of the third category, Ashabu Harb, warriors. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the conquest against Quraysh, the tribe of Quraysh when they breached the covenant with they had established with the Prophet ﷺ in the treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah he ﷺ attacked them in their land and he invoked Allah and said اللهم عمي عنهم الأخبار حتى نبغتهم في بلادهم Oh Allah, make them unaware of the news so that we surprise them in their lands. And as with the first group, the ones subjected to jizya, those who are under Islamic rule, and they don't transgress against us and if any one of them uh, breaches the covenant then he or the group if they do that then they fall into or become from the third group the people with whom there is war between them and us From the benefits of this hadith is the good character of the Prophet ﷺ. That is when he smiled, when, when he saw them pleased with the coming of uh, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah with the, uh, carrying the, the, uh, the jizya, the money. And this is, uh, there is no doubt that this is from the good etiquette and good manners. <clears throat> Sometimes you find people, if someone sees uh, something yearning to ask for something, uh, they, they turn uh, against him in uh, be upset or... Uh, phone or something but 
But when the Messenger وسلم, saw them, he smiled alayhi salatu wasalam. And from this there is also the benefit to relay the good news to the people because this brings uh, happiness to them. And anything uh, that brings happiness to your brother, then you anticipate the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is evident with respect to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said in the hadith, وَأَبْشِرُوا Have the glad tidings or the good news. Now, in this hadith there is also evidence that it is permissible to make an oath without being asked to make the oath. Where is this taken from the hadith? The question is to you. Where is this taken from the hadith? Hmm? I repeat the question, yes. The question, yeah. From this is the evidence, we said that there is evidence in the hadith that the permissibility to make an oath without someone asking you to do it. Where is this taken from in the hadith? Yes, exactly, by Allah. No, he said by Allah. Fawallahi. He said, عَلَيْكُمْ By Allah, I'm not afraid that uh, that worldly oath will be given to you in, or rather, uh, I'm not afraid that you will become poor. You see that? And in this hadith, there is the warning regarding this worldly life. Now, where is this taken from? Where is this taken from? I am afraid that worldly wealth will be given to you in abundance. Now, طيب, here there is a question. We know that Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, will descend to earth before the establishment of the hour, before the end of time and this life. And we know that he is not going to bring a new legislation, right? We know that he is not going to bring a new legislation, isn't it? Then how come he would lift the levy, the tax levy, and will not accept it? You see the question? You see the question? You understand the question? So what's the answer? Mm, no, I don't think you, you have to think part of the legislation of Muhammad. I have no choice to accept Islam. No, we know. You see, in the beginning we mentioned that he will. No, no. Listen, I will repeat the question again. We know that he will not rule by a new legislation, right? See, this is, this is the issue now. He's not going to be ruling by a new legislation. Tayyip. So, then how he'll, you know, he will then uh, lift the, the tax. This is like legislation. Aha, uh -huh. okay, that's it, that's it. Naji 9, because the Prophet ﷺ, he will, he will do it, so it's not new. Uh, yeah, see that? The Prophet ﷺ, who told us about the, uh, that Jesus ﷺ, that Isa ﷺ will do this? Who told us? Who told us this? Who told us this? The Rasul ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ. So therefore, he approved it or not? In his telling, there was approval or not? So therefore it is from the Sharia of whom? So therefore it is from the Sharia of whom? Yes, the Sharia of Rasulullah Wasallam, since he approved it. You see that? Right. Because this may, some, uh, some people may raise this question. Question, how, how would the, 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 this, the, this word... Okay. Uh, destroy the person 
dunya, this life, this world, the life. The answer is when the person competes for its, for this life, it may destroy him uh, from the religious aspect. And it may be, yes, because of the competing, and it may be that there will be physical destruction if people compete for this life and they fight on it, and they will kill each other, or destroy each other. Now, this ends the discussion, inshallah. I ask Allah the Most High to accept it from me, and to make it a benefit for myself and for all of you. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم